before dominating the Utah Jazz in Salt Lake City, which we'll get to, a Game of the Year caliber thrilling W over the five-seeded Phoenix Suns was dramatic for more reasons than one. Off both a masterful Kerr playset and Pajemski dime, Curry's game winner immediately proved ESPN's Bob Myers wrong. Draymond outclassed Nurkic, plus locked down Durant on the final possession, Kaminga stayed on pace to win 2024's Most Improved Player of the Year. Including the Jazz win, the Bay Area's ball club have won five straight, seven of their last eight, and have the second easiest schedule remaining in the West. However, from the mainstream media, among others, stay tuned to see how the Golden State Warrior hating is sickening. But if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. Appreciate your support nonetheless. Back to the content. With Steve Kerr in Serbia attending services for Dejan Milojevic, former Nets man in charge and current Dubs assistant Kenny Atkinson's first game as an interim head coach in Utah was despite some early foul trouble from Green and Kaminga and the occasional squall, relatively smooth sailing. The 2022 NBA Finals duo of Curry and Wiggins combined to be a plus 61, with Andrew playing some of his best basketball since those finals. Draymond hit a ridiculous buzzer beater to end the first half. A second to work with Draymond running three! Oh, he made, and he lasers it home! <laughs> Gary Payton II's dirty work and efficiency, plus Brandon Pajemski's shot creation, provided a crucial jolt of bucket getting off the bench, combining for 21. The dynamic front court of Kaminga and Green finished with 26 as Draymond nearly posted a triple-double, while the Splash Brothers posted a vintage 51 combined points. Kenny Atkinson deserves credit for stepping up well in Kerr's absence, as the minutes he gave both Moody and Spurts throughout, as well as Trace Jackson Davis down the stretch, helped the Dubs extend and defend their never-to-be-looked-back-on lead. Overall, it was great to see Clay bounce back and Steph continue his hot streak. However, with all of that said, before that outing, we have to cover what went down against Phoenix. With Golden State down 2 with 3.3 in the final quarter, Kerr draws up an action involving Thompson clearing out to the left corner, Wiggins setting a flare for Green, Green then setting a pin down for Curry, and just as Draymond sets it, Pajemski releases the inbound, a pass that's a mix of power and backspin, baits Beal into a steal attempt, leaving Bradley out of position after swiping away to no avail. This gives Curry more more than enough space to let it fly. Gets the ball, puts up a three-pointer. Bang! Steph Curry nails the three-pointer! Only problem was, Steph left .7 on the clock, and on top of that, Wiggins was called for a foul on Booker, as Booker unnaturally initiated contact by flailing back into Wiggins, who makes a play on the ball. Luckily, the Dubs had a foul to give, and Draymond's clamps would seal the deal, as the DPOY played sound two-hands-up defense while beating Durant to the spot, a showing where he posted 15-9-7, saw Green resume his rivalry with Yusuf Nurkic, as first the Bosnian would hit Draymond with a too-small celly and slap the floor, before the smaller Green would go right back back at him in the post, score over him, and do that same selly. Post-game, even after being the first one to trash talk, Nurkic would say that Draymond hasn't changed since being suspended, and that it's only a matter of time before he hits someone again. Almost like he just expected Green to back down, here was Draymond in response. What did you think of the too small celebration that, that you, you seem to get him back? You can't get bullied a couple plays later if you're gonna do that. <laughs> You can't be a nothing defender if you're gonna do that. So, you know, you, you're gonna do a holiday. that. You, man, will probably outweigh me by 70 pounds. And you get put in the rim, got to be more careful. Curry would give his take on the matter, stating Draymond was in his head, plain and simple. In opposition to how Nurkic put it, Green's been keeping a much cooler head while also maintaining his winning impact. While he is still complaining to the refs, it's not in as aggressive of a manner as it was prior to his suspension, not even close. And since returning against Memphis on January 14th, Draymond leads the Warriors in plus minus, and as you can see, it's not even close. Draymond got hit with a questionable tech given out by Jason Goble against Phoenix, but Aside from that, he's gone 11 games without receiving a single tech or flagrant. This patented fake dribble handoff utterly fools Nurkic and was one of Green's nicer renditions of his trick play. 
Draymond's finishing around the basket's elite, whether it's off the dribble or as the roller. Green's also been money from distance, where he's making over 40% of his shots from three-point range, which is a career high. We talked briefly about Draymond's continuity with Kaminga last vid, and that's a big reason for the Warriors ranking number one in the association in paint points per game this month. Here, JK's the two in a delay flare slip action where he's tasked with ghosting a flare screen for Steph and slipping back door, where Green finds him with the entry before a Kaminga drop step completes the play. Next, Draymond drops the no-looker in transition to JK, who gallops his way in for the off-handed finish through KD. A picture-perfect high-low connection features Dre dishing from the post and Kaminga reverse-sealing Gordon to receive and finish the lob. This time it's Kaminga dishing and Draymond reverse sealing as a rangy gather from Green frees him up under the basket. So the chemistry of the dub starting front court is becoming a primary storyline for Golden State. Green and Kaminga's respective abilities complement one another, which is big time. It was also massive that the dubs got that much closer to 100% health, as they now only await the return of CP3, as GP2's return after being out for 16 games with a strained left hamstring saw him drop a bench team high of 11 while making all five of his field goals, having an all-NBA defender, and one of the game's most high IQ all-around talents in the young glove back will give the dubs a huge boost. Against the Booker KD Suns, who never gave in for a second, it was a back-and-forth game, specifically in quarter number three, which featured five ties and ten lead changes alone. Obviously, the carrying and clutchness from Steph, defensive dominance from Draymond, and secondary scoring from Kaminga willed Golden State over the top, but that wouldn't have been the case without several valuable young role players in the backcourt. Rookie rotation staple Brandon Pajemski and two-way contract sophomore Lester Quinones both made massive plays. Pods continues to be a pleasant surprise, as this kid doesn't settle for anything offensively, always takes the best shot available whether it's in the lane or when defenses leave him open from deep. Defensively, Pods is leading the NBA in charges drawn, one of the reasons why Dub Nation started calling him Mini Draymond. That's also the case because of Brandon's above average rebounding for a guard. As Pods has lived up to my expectations and then some, the Rooks so far proved to have a dominant, high IQ, all around based archetype. For Lester Quinones, without several big shots down the stretch in that Suns matchup from the Dominican Salvadoran 23-year-old prospect, the dramatic finish wouldn't have been possible. But now, let's get to the sickening warrior hating, as unfortunately a recent flurry of success hasn't stopped the mainstream media from being openly biased against Golden State. Most prominently, you had Doris Burke, who, despite being the ESPN play-by-play -play analyst for this game, on the last possession in the Dub suns matchup, gets caught on camera complaining to the official about a no-call on Kevin Durant, not even trying to hide who she wants to win anymore. However, this next bit of blasphemous disrespect towards the dubs is even more insane. Former Warrior GM turned mainstream analyst Bob Myers said Kevin Durant's better than Stephen Curry, despite Steph having two rings without KD next to him and Durant having zero without Steph next to him. Even Durant himself would state post-game that Curry's the greatest at his position ever and top five all time. From Myers, the outward hating on towards a man responsible for giving him four championship rings is sickening. Thankfully, only a few hours after Myers would declare Curry as less important to two of his rings than Kevin Durant on national TV, Steph would on the same network expose his former GM. Curry would drain every clutch shot when it mattered the very most, willing the dubs over the top with ice in his veins. Steph followed up his 11 triple clinic against Indiana by pouring in another 9 threes against Phoenix. The most bewildering of those 9 deep range bombs aside from his game winner was when Steph took former teammate Kevin Durant rant for a spin. A shot opened up with a beautifully chained together dribble combo as he hits KD with seven different moves to finally shed him for a 26 footer and cool guys don't look at explosions, Curry gets back on D while the ball's still in the air. Meanwhile for Jonathan Kaminga, starting to draw comparisons to a young Giannis Adetokounmpo, no one can stop this man Kaminga when he gains momentum going downhill. Key to his maturity has been Jonathan's mechanics and reading the defense IQ, becoming a few of his best qualities. Evident improvements given his footwork in the post and elusiveness working without the basketball this season. Unfortunately, the officials were given the dubs an extremely hard time. In addition to Booker flopping and getting the whistle in the final seconds, Draymond getting hacked and the refs not calling a foul then teeing him up, 
Booker would then get away with fouling Steph on a three-pointer that should have been a four-point play. So on that note, the shout-out question is, between the refs against Phoenix, Doris Burke, or Bob Myers, who is most out of line? Pause to read last bid's winners on your screen. Your boy Deep Flow signing off.